What is up guys? It's RKT here and welcome back to another video. First off, I just want to apologize for missing a few videos lately and that has been because I have finally gotten screen recording. So I uh, hope you guys like it. I hope it's better for you guys uh, and easier for you guys to see all the different things that we're going to be making. And uh, please do leave suggestions in the comments about what you would like to see me make on the channel or ideas for series you would like to do. It's a... Uh, I'm open to all you guys' suggestions. But uh, anyway, today, guys, I'm going to show you how to make a basketball game in Python 3. So let's go ahead and get into the demo, shall we? All right, so here we have a simple basketball game where you just press S to shoot, and you just try and get it in the basket. Let's see if I can get one real quick to show off all the features that this game has. Nope, I missed. Okay, but there you go. You see, it calculates your shots and how many baskets you've made or your score, and it tells you your accuracy. So this is the game that we're going to be making today, so if you want to make this, please stay tuned. Right, so the first step whenever you're making any game is to put some comments in. And aside from the first comment, which just tells you what the game is, I'm going to do the import modules comment. Because before I make any game, before I even start, Putting it together, I always import all the modules that I'm going to need for that particular game. So for this particular one, you're going to need the turtle module, the random module, and the time module. So the next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to set up the screen, as you can clearly see marked by this comment. Another example of how good comments are, why you should always make comments whenever you're, whenever you're doing something different in your code, because you always want to remember what each block of code is for. So, right here, wn equals turtle.screen with parentheses. This is basically setting the variable wn to the name of the screen. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to use that same variable that we just created, and we're going to set the width and the height for our screen. So, that's going to be 700 width, and the height is 500 pixels. Next, we're going to put the screen in the color mode 255, which enables us to use custom colors so we don't just have to. so the only ones that are available to us are just the presets next what we're going to do is we're actually going to set the background color to a nice what i would call a chalkboard green so that is going to be zero red 180 green and 90 blue next what we're going to do is we're going to do wn dot tracer and then parentheses zero in those this is basically going to going to allow us to update the screen on our own because we don't want it to update automatically we're going to tell it when to update and this will just help the game look a little bit smoother next we're going to do we're going to name the window that we're going to open and we're going to call it shooting hoops by rkt so the next part we're going to get into is we're going to go ahead and create the turtles that we're going to use for this particular game so the first one we're going to create is the basket turtle or the hoop turtle the one that's going to move around that we're going to try to hit with our basketball so the way to create a, another turtle is we give it a name, and we set it equal to a turtle dot turtle. That'll just basically tell it that it is a turtle object. Next, we're going to want to show turtle because for some reason uh, I was experimenting and it was hidden, so I had to show the turtle with this command right here. Then we're going to set its pen to up so that when we move it, it doesn't draw because we don't want it to draw lines all over the screen. And then next, we're going to use the go to command to give it some coordinates because if you don't know. Think of the screen that we're going to open as kind of like a coordinate plane. And keeping our width and height of the screen in mind, we're going to use that as a reference to know where to put these coordinates and stuff. So this is just going to put this the basket one at 150 Y coordinates, so just maybe up but in the center of the screen. Next, we're going to tell the uh, the screen, WN right here, to register a shape that I have created. And I've called it hoop1.gif, and we're going to set the basket shape to that GIF. Now, you're going to want to, when you're making your own graphics, you're going to want to save it as a GIF file so it actually works. And you're going to want to save that in the same file that your program is saved in so that you don't have to reroute the directory and you just get it from there. Next, we're going to create the turtle that is the basketball. So again, we're going to create a turtle with this command right here. We're going to set its pen to up, and we're going to set its shape to an, or, to an orange circle, basically, by setting its shape and its color like that. Then we're going to set its shape size to 2.5, because we want it to be a little bit bigger, but not too big. 
And again, we're going to keep our coordinate plane in mind when creating these coordinates right here, which is going to be in the center of the screen, but down near the bottom. Next up, we're going to want to create three separate turtles that are going to keep track of our shots, our accuracy, and how many points we've actually scored. So I've called the first one the pen turtle, that is actually just going to be the score turtle. And again, we're going to create it with this command right here. We're going to hide it because we don't want people to see it. We want this pen to be up. We're going to give it these coordinates, which is basically the bottom left-hand corner. I'm going to tell it to write score zero with the font of Verdana, size 30, and it's going to be bold. Next, the shots turtle, pretty much the same thing, and then the accuracy turtle. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to write some functions, and uh, only about one, I think, is necessary. I actually ended up making two, but two aren't really necessary, and you'll see where it isn't necessary, I'll point it out to you. So the way to create a function is we're gonna call it def, I guess that's short for define, then we're gonna do shoot, that's the name of our variable, parentheses, and then a colon. So for this function, we're gonna start a for loop. And don't worry about that, that's just a random thing I put in there, in the range of 30. And this basically means it's gonna do this next set of instructions 30 times. So it's gonna set the variable y to the y coordinate of the basketball. It's going to add 15 to it, and then it's going to set the basketball's y coordinate to that updated one. Then it's going to time dot sleep for two hundredths of a second, and it's going to update so you can actually see that. And then it's also going to do a collision check. So it's going to do this 30 times still, so it's going to check if the, the ball, the basketball's x coordinate is less than the basket's x coordinate plus 30, and some more stuff like that. And also checking for the Y coordinate, which you can't see over here, but what you can't see is just checking if the ball's Y coordinate is the same as the basket's Y coordinate. So that's all that does. That's basically gonna check to see if the basketball gets in within a certain range right where the uh, hoop is located. So if that is true, it's going to make score one a global variable, and it's gonna add one to score, it's going to set the basketball's y coordinate of 120 so that it, uh, this is basically this little next part is going to make it look like it went through the hoop. So it's going to go down, it's going to update, it's going to wait a little bit, it's going to set it down again, it's going to update, and then our uh, score, so our score pen is going to clear, and then it's going to write the updated one. And so how this works is you write it, and then where you want a variable to go, you put a set of curly brackets. And then you say dot format, and then you tell which variable you want to put in place of those curly brackets. And then you do the, basically the same thing, where you set the font, the size, and uh, whether you want it to be bold, italics, or simply normal. And then the final thing it's going to do in this loop is it's going to actually break the for loop up here. Next, what still happens in the same function, but no matter if you actually make it in the goal, so if you can see here, it's what happens after the for loop. It's going to make the shots variable global. And it's going to tell the basketball to go to these coordinates. It's going to add one to the shots. It's going to clear the pen 2 and write the updated version. And then if score is the same as 0, it's going to calculate the accuracy and write that. And the reason what we're doing this, the reason we're using an if statement here is because if we let it calculate the accuracy on its own every single time, if you don't make your first shot, it's going to try and divide with zero. That's a big no-no for the program. It's going to give you an error, and so that's why we want to make sure they've actually scored at least one point before we try to calculate the accuracy. And then down here, I just have a little function that doesn't really do anything. I was experimenting, so you don't actually need this. You can just use the shoot function, you don't need to have it, and a whole other function that calls the shoot function. Next up, we're going to actually do some key bindings. It's only one because it's just S to shoot. So we're going to tell the window, the name of the window, which we named it as WN, to listen. And we're going to tell it to on key press, then you're going to tell it the function you want it to activate, and then put in quotation marks the letter that you want it, to, that you want to bind it to. So in this case, we're binding it to the letter S. Under here, we've got some variables that you may have seen before, and that is because global variables must be declared before they're defined. So that's why we have these down here. Next, we're going to get into the final part, guys, the main game loop. 
and says while true. So this is basically always going to report true, so it's going to be an infinite loop. And if you have trouble with infinite loops, like when you're writing something and you don't know how to stop it, control C is a hotkey that will uh, stop the loop for you. But anyway, I'm going to tell it to update the screen, because remember we said it's what we want to up, we want to tell it to update manually, we don't want it to do it automatically. And then we're going to do the hoop movement. So it's going to set X to a random integer between 1 and 150. And then we're going to set the X coordinate of basket to its X coordinate plus that X number that we just generated. And then on time about sleep, a tenth of a second, it's going to do the same thing. So this time it's going to subtract that from the X value. And the final thing down here, guys, we're almost at the end, is some border checking for the hoop so it doesn't go off the screen because that would just be bad if that happened. So if the basket's X coordinate is greater than 250, we're going to set its X coordinate back to 220. And same here, if the basket's X coordinate is less than negative 250, we're going to set its X back to negative 220. So that's basically it, guys. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you, make sure to hit that like button down below. It uh, really helps out a lot. And um, if you're new around here and you feel like sticking around my channel for a while, make sure to subscribe. And other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll be seeing you guys next time. Bye!